Hi, welcome to my complete guide on Aventuring. Aventuring is a newest 5 star coming in the second phase of version 2.1. He is a very interesting hybrid between a DPS and a sustain that looks to bring forward a new era of supports that is capable of doing multiple roles well. In this video, I'll be going through everything you need to know on how to build and play Aventuring, covering his best light crones, relics, planet ornaments, and many more. Before we start, I'll be giving away a supply pass slash welcome moon slash crystal card to my subscribers at 4k subs, so make sure you subscribe to enter. To begin, what does Aventuring do? Aventuring is a 5 star imaginary unit following the path of preservation. Aventuring skill, cornerstone deluxe gifts or allies a shield called Fortify Wager for 3 turns and can be stacked. Aventuring's talent, short loaded right, increases effect rest for all allies with Fortify Wager and when they get attacked, Aventuring gains 1 stack of blind bet. But for when Aventuring has Fortify Wager, he can resist crowd control and gains 2 stacks of blind bet when attacking instead. Additionally, upon reaching 7 stacks of Blind Bed, Aventuring will launch a 7 hit follow up attack with each hit being a random enemy. Aventuring's ultimate Roulette Shark Renderling gains 1 to 7 stacks of Blind Bed and deals damage to a single enemy while applying Unnerved. Unnerved is a debuff that increases crit damage dealt by allies for this target. And last but not least, Aventuring's technique, the red or the black, is a slot machine with a chance to get a lot of defense or a better defense for the whole team. For Venturing's bonus trace abilities, Bingo additionally gains 1 stack of blind bet when any ally uses a follow up attack, and when Aventuring himself uses a follow up attack, all allies gains a fortified wager and another one for the lower shielded ally. Hot Hand gives everyone a fortified wager at the start of the battle, and finally, Leverage increases crit rate by 2% for every 100 defense he has over 1600, up to 48%. Aventuring has quite a loaded kit. He is looking to be our first true hybrid DPS slash sustain unit, especially with his follow up attack and leverage major trace. However, that brings onto the question how should you build him? DPS or sustain or both? The answer is that it truly depends. He gets more than enough free stats to still do damage while building sustain, and his shield is still big enough to still sustain if building DPS. So, in most cases, it's hybrid. Or, more specifically, better substats is what most likely is the best for you. However, that doesn't change the fact that you still should prioritize what you want to get out of your venturing. As some people may need a good sustain, so going full tank is better, or if you're at an investment level that doesn't need much sustain, going DPS would be better. Now with his kit out of the way, what are Aventuring's best light cones? Starting off as usual, his best in slot will be his signature light cone. While it's not as bad as Acheron's, his signature will truly make him much stronger compared to other options in the game. The light cone gives a massive 40% defense while increasing his crit damage and makes him more than just a sustained slash DPS, but now also an insane debuffer, as if his ultimate didn't already debuff enough. So obviously his light cone will unlock his true potential. However, that being said, for his other light cone choices, we have to first choose to focus on DPS or sustain. For DPS options, light currents like the new Concept of 2 or Destiny will be great alternatives, and for sustain options, Moment of Victory and Day 1 will do just fine. With Moment of Victory generally being the best second option for both builds, as the massive defense is great, but being targeted more often actually means more often follow up attacks. But of course, if you're playing Akron with him, you can always just use the Trend Light Current. Next up is Aventuring's best relics and planet ornaments. His best relic set is a 4 piece pioneer diver of dead waters. The reason is simply that he has more than enough shielding for most people and what's left is just to buff his damage. Since both his signature liker and his ultimate apply debuff, getting max stacks on this relic is relatively easy and therefore makes this a very good set for him. However, people who do not have his signature liker may struggle with uptime on the 4 piece bonus, so if you're still looking to get more damage, you can settle for a 2 piece ash blazing plus 2 piece whatever, like hacker spades or pioneers. But for people looking for a more defensive role, 4 piece nice or purity would be a great set for bigger shields. As for planet ornaments, again, Aventuring's shield is more than big enough without any help, so Inner Sacerdo would be his best in slot for damage dealing, however, if you see him as more of a support rather than a DPS, of course, Panacone, Wonwack, or Broken Neal would do just fine too. Naturally, a unit as complex as Aventuring will have some complications about what stats he wants. So here are Aventuring's best relic and planet stats. But beforehand, I want to separate this into two parts, which is one for DPS focus and one for sustain focus. Because the reality for Aventuring is, it's literally all substats. So for DPS focus Aventuring, we're looking for crit damage body, defense of speed boots, defense of imaginary balls, and defense rope. Due to Aventuring's major trace bingo, you really want a bit of speed so you can refresh the countdown on this trace. So while I wouldn't say you need speed boots per se, if you don't have many substats or speed, going speed boots will usually be better than defense boots. And for his balls, um, yeah, and for his balls, it's purely up to substats. Now for sustain Aventuring, we're looking for defense body, speed boots, defense balls, and defense slash energy rope. 
Of course, if you're planning to go for sustain, defense rope will be better as his ult doesn't directly give you a shield, but I like to just run the energy rope as since you're doing less damage on this build anyways, you might as well have some higher debuff uptime on your ultimate. However, with all that being said, you really want to fully use Event Train's Major Trace Leverage, as 48% crit rate is just so good. So your first priority on building him is to get as close as you can to 4000 defense as that will reach the max stack on this trace. Alright, moving on onto Event Train's Edelon. Event Train's E1 gives everyone with Fortify Rager crit damage and now makes his ultimate also give everyone Fortify Rager. This is an incredibly strong Edelon as it not only increases his shield uptime but also increases crit damage for everyone. His shield is basically how his whole kit runs so getting uptime on it is insane and more crit damage is just a cherry on top. Event Train's E2 now makes his basic apply an all type resist down debuff. So now we're just making him a pseudo inhibitor unit as well. Pretty obviously, this is very strong as A, it's a rare debuff, and B, it makes his otherwise useless basic become quite useful. Aventurance E3 and 5 are just trace level upgrades. Aventurance E4 increases defense when he launches a follow up attack, while increasing the hit of it to 10. This is just a nice overall buff for his follow up attack. And lastly, Aventurance E6 increases damage dealt for every ally with Fortified Rager, which is pretty insane and it truly makes him a strong DPS. So, the age old question of E1 or S1. Well honestly, despite all my praises for his E1, Aventry's Lycoin just does so much more for him, as it applies another debuff for Dead Waters, while also increasing defense and crit damage, which is much more important in the long run. And finally, we get to Aventry's best teams. To begin, I want to mention one of, if not the strongest single target team being this one, with Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Romay, and Aventry. This is an absolutely insane follow-up attack focused team that has everyone help each other perfectly. Topaz helps follow up attack damage, while alongside Aventuring helps the debuffs needed for Dr. Ratio. Dr. Ratio's own attack will proc Topaz Numbi, which will in turn help Dr. Ratio with his follow up attack. And not to mention, all these follow up attacks will also increase Aventuring's blind bet, making him also do more follow up attacks. So, if you can't already tell, the synergy between these units is absolutely unmatched, and honestly speaking, this is actually a whole team comp in and of itself. So, we can replace Dr. Ratio with Clara, Rome with Branya, or even the upcoming Robin, and this team will still have very very good or even better synergy with one another. But not everyone is focused on his photo up attacks, and so he becomes the best sustain for Acheron. Aventuring with the Trend Lycoon or Signature Lycoon will apply high amounts of debuffs consistently, making him the premier sustain for Acheron. However, with all that being said, at the end of the day, Aventuring is still just a genuinely good sustain unit. So anytime you need a sustain unit, he'll be an option, and actually a top choice most of the time as even if you don't care about his follow up attack, and even if you don't care about his debuffs, his shield is still very good and at times you don't need to sustain for a long time, doing a bit extra damage on your sustain unit will actually lead to a much higher team DPS output. So yeah, Aventuring is just an absolutely stacked character with so much in his kit, from shields to damage, from debuffs to, you know, if you have Edelon's buffs, there's really nothing else to say other than he's the jack of all trades but the master or not. Now, I won't get into the implications of that, so I'll leave it at that for now. 